Once a person is saved are they always saved? The answer is yes, when people come to know Christ as their savior, they are brought into a relationship with God that guarantees their salvation as eternally secure. To be clear, salvation is more than saying a prayer or making a decision for Christ, salvation is a sovereign act of God whereby an unregenerate sinner is washed, renewed, and born again by the Holy Spirit. When salvation occurs, God gives the forgiven sinner a new heart and puts a new spirit within him, Ezekiel 36. The spirit will cause the saved person to walk in obedience to God's word. Numerous passages of scripture declare the fact that, as an act of God, salvation is secure, Romans 8.30 declares, and those he predestined, he also called, those he called, he also justified, those he justified, he also glorified. This verse tells us that from the moment God chooses us, it is as if we are glorified in his presence in heaven. There is nothing that can prevent a believer from one day being glorified because God has already purposed it in heaven. Once a person is justified, his salvation is guaranteed, he is as secure as if he is already glorified in heaven. Paul asks two crucial questions in Romans 8, who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who will bring a charge against God's elect? No one will. Because Christ is our advocate. Who will condemn us? No one will. Because Christ, the one who died for us, is the one who condemns. We have both the Advocate and Judge as our Savior. Believers are born again when they believe. For a Christian to lose his salvation, he would have to be unborn. The Bible gives no evidence that the new birth can be taken away. The Holy Spirit indwells all believers, John 14, and baptizes all believers into the body of Christ, 1 Corinthians 12. For a believer to become unsaved, he would have to be unindwelt and detached from the body of Christ. John 3.15 states that whoever believes in Jesus Christ will have eternal life. If you believe in Christ today and have eternal life, but lose it tomorrow, then it was never eternal at all. Hence, if you lose your salvation, the promises of eternal life in the Bible would be in error. In a conclusive argument, scripture says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans 8. Remember the same God who saved you is the same God who will keep you. Once we are saved, we are always saved. Our salvation is most definitely eternally secure. Let me set the table with something the Lord Jesus said. When the disciples returned from preaching with glowing reports of amazing victories over the devil, our Lord called them back to earth, so to speak, with this, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you. But rejoice because your names are written in heaven, Luke 10. See what he did though? The Lord changed the basis of their joy and thanksgiving from something that fluctuates like the visible results of missions, which can be good or bad, up and down to something permanent, our salvation. Jesus thought our salvation was secure. Otherwise, wouldn't he have chosen some other basis for our joy? No other conclusion is possible. Jesus clearly thought salvation was a one-time and done proposition something permanent, solid, irreversible. As far as I am able to tell, you will not find one place in the utterances of the Lord Jesus that say otherwise. For those who find they cannot accept the teaching of once saved always saved, aka, the security of the believer, we have a few questions. 1. Why would you not accept the clear teachings of the Lord Jesus? That question alone ought to cinch the matter. For every objection some can throw up to the doctrine of the security of the believer we have perhaps 50 statements from the Lord Jesus that our salvation is eternal and everlasting and untouchable. 2. How is it you think we can undo what God has done? 
in Christ, when you were saved, scripture teaches God erased your sin and gave you eternal life. He wrote your name down in heaven's book and made you his child. You are called both born again and adopted into the family. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit. In fact, Romans 8 says you are called, justified, and glorified even. And it also says there is therefore now no condemnation. That's fairly strong, it seems to me. And yet, some believe by an act of their free will, they can walk away from all that. They just decided to leave and so everything God did was suddenly null and void. 3. How is it we are able to do what no one can, and that is to snatch ourselves out of Christ's hand and the Father's hand? John 10 28 29. Nothing can be clearer. Some say, well, no one else can. But the devil can. Oh, then wouldn't that make the devil stronger than the Lord? And to those who say, we can snatch ourselves, I pose the same question. Jesus literally said no one and nothing can take you out of my hand. 4. How are we able to unseal ourselves, something the Holy Spirit did when we were saved? Ephesians 1, wouldn't that be an impossibility? 5. Have you read Galatians and seen what Paul said to people who thought they were perfected by their works? They said they knew they were saved by faith, but after that, it was all works to them. Good works and therein, bad works and they're cast away. And Paul says they were dead wrong. You foolish Galatians! Who has bewitched you, before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified? This is the only thing I want to find out from you, did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law, or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun by the Spirit, are you now being puffed by the flesh? Galatians 3. If you believe bad works cancels your salvation, then aren't you saying your works keep you saved? Certainly, works are important. Ephesians 2 says we were created in Christ Jesus in order to bring forth good works, that God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. 6. Does it make you angry for someone to teach once saved, always saved? If so, please analyze why. It seems to me you would be more charitable toward your brothers and sisters who are taking Jesus' statements at face value, when a magazine posted an article called, 7 questions on once saved, always saved, the comments that rushed in were almost universally hostile. They weren't just disagreeing, they were angry. I find it hard to comprehend that they grew hostile and mean-spirited over this. I wonder what this signifies. 7. Do you wish you did have this kind of confidence that salvation, once given, is forever? A preacher who believes in losing his salvation once told me, I wish my God were as big as yours. 8. Do you agree that no matter which side you come down on for this doctrine or against it there are some difficult scriptures to explain? And if that's the case, why then would you choose the position that undermines the very things Jesus said and taught? I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who gave them to me, is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand, John 10. I will readily admit that the passage in Hebrews 6 seems to say that losing one's salvation is a possibility. However, it goes on to say that if that did happen, it would be impossible to renew them to repentance. And yet, I have never met a person who believed in losing one's salvation who did not also believe he could get it back and be saved again. And again. My response is simply, show me that in the Bible. Not one person in Holy Scripture was ever saved twice. Not one. 9. Are you closed to the subject? Or are you still open to considering evidence for the contrary view? I hope that nothing in this video of mine has made anyone think that I have all the answers and that I am closed to something new. No one possesses all truth, let alone this simple country boy. Most especially, I hope no one thinks this is as some have charged a man-made doctrine, intended either to say what man wants to hear or to license him to roam as he pleases without fear of jeopardizing his salvation. 
10. Why does eternal life not mean eternal life? Or, put another way, when the children of the Lord lose their salvation, do they quit being his children? Consider this a plea for clear thinking on the subject, for believing the whole thrust of scripture's teaching, for standing on the promises of God's unchanging word. <laughs>